Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Larry Casilla from AmmoNYC.com. And over the past 20 years, I've had the privilege of cleaning and protecting some of the most priceless pieces of automotive history as my day job. But my secret passion is finding that lost car, the car that has an inch of dust on it, that has mouse poo in it, and sort of pulling it out of the garage, rejuvenating it, and reigniting that passion for the car that the person once had all those years ago. Good man. <laughs> Today is no exception. We have a 1967 Oldsmobile Toronado that is in Long Island. It's been sitting in the garage for 15 to 20 years. It's got covered in mouse poo and dust. And the son of the owner called and said, hey, we'd like to pull this out and sort of rejuvenate that joy that my dad once had for it. Plus, I'm also getting married in the next six or seven months. Wedding dress approved? I think so. I think I could hop in in my dress. And I want to be able to take this freshly cleaned car to my wedding. So we have a whole lot of work to do today on this episode of Drive and Protect. There she is. Totally. Hey. Hey, how's it going? I'm Larry. Larry, nice to meet you. I'm guessing she's in here? Yeah, she's right in there. Let's bring you over there. Glory. <laughs> How long has it been sitting here? Um, probably like 15 years. Much like the Mercedes 280 SL I found in another garage, it's the same concept here. The sons want to get the cars out for their dads. This one, ironically, is almost the exact same scenario. It's inside a garage, but the garage itself is a time capsule. This one has old posters of the car, there's car parts everywhere, products on the shelf, and the outside has a thick layer of dust and mouse prints. The inside, same exact thing, mouse remnants and mold. You got mold in here, my friend. The next day before Devin arrived with his flatbed, Pat and his dad cleaned out the garage to make sure the Toronado would fit by. Then they filled up the tires and put her on the bed of the truck. When she arrived, Devin untied the wheels, and when we went to push it off, the driver's side wheel was frozen, which was sort of odd because it was rolling two hours earlier, but whatever. So Devin pulled it back and forth with the winch while I shook the wheel from side to side, and it popped free. Inside and under the lights, it was really covered in dust, a lot more than I could see inside that garage. And what looks like sheetrock, I'm guessing, I have no idea, but the body is pretty straight, which is cool. So a healthy detailing is gonna get this thing back into perfect shape. Okay, so after uh, a little bit of effort to get this thing in because the rear wheel mm -hmm. is locked up, we got it in here, it weighs a bunch, but what makes this so special? Well, as you mentioned before, 67 Olds Tornado, front wheel drive. I remember reading Guinness Book of World Records. This was the fastest production front wheel drive car, 130 miles an hour. Don't see a lot of them anymore. I think a lot of them were used in demolition derbies because they pulled so well. <laughs> Regardless, this is a rare specimen because it's very straight. Uh, it looks original and the paint is single stage. Now, normally when we polish single stage, we can expect to see the color of the paint come off on the pad. Sure. But in this case, because uh, single stage metallics had lead back then, when you polish and look at the pad then, you will see black. So that's gonna be interesting. So if, if the it, car was red and you were polishing it normally, you have a red pad. See, in this case, if it was red- It would be and reddish red, and black, black. And, which was scary to see that yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Other things that we noticed on this paint, obviously it has some, <laughs> it had some uh, rodents living about it. And you mentioned this, Larry, show this here. Yeah, so what we found in the Lamborghini as well is there's like a little bit of a highway that runs around the car. And this is just all fecal matter. That's pee and poo as they yep. walk around. And at, over time, as it sits there in the humidity, it started to rust it and corrode the chrome. So it's very, very strong there. But a lot of things like that, we're looking forward to cleaning up, making this look as good as new. Step one is to power wash the paint after all these years.
Next, we added Brute and Boost in the foamer and soaked the paint. During the wash, Kevin used his soap and water mixture in a spray bottle along with a small brush to agitate the emblems and the tight spots while Jason and I washed the larger areas with our microfiber wash towels. For the wheels, I used plum and a few brushes to clean them up and they look pretty good. This is the benefit of storing a car indoors, but later on in the episode, you're gonna see Kevin go completely insane as the very last step on these wheels. You gotta see it. The tailpipes had light oxidation as well, so Kevin used steel wool by hand and it looked much better when he was done. Now the paint itself had an incredible amount of contamination on it. You can actually hear Jason rubbing his hand back and forth, like an abnormal amount. So if you look at the driver's side door, it actually looks very rusted. These are just little bits of rust coming through while we were clang. So the paint in general is just in desperate need of exfoliation. Once we were done with clang, Jason power washed once again. A lot better. A lot better. Hey, Jimmy, you ever cracked corn? Have you ever cracked corn? I don't really care. Next, we lifted the car to take a look at the undercarriage and of course all the spider webs that were everywhere. And while we were power washing the underneath and playing with that, Kevin was cleaning the lower parts of the car with steel wool. Now with the car back down and the paint clean and dry, Jason started a test spot just to kind of get a feel for the single stage slash lead combo. As you can see here, the pad turned a bit black, which of course is because of the lead within the paint. And after a few minutes of sort of game planning and discussing it, we decided to use a less aggressive method to leave as much paint on the car as possible while being sort of okay with not removing the heavy or the deep scratches. This is a brand new wool pad and this is the load that we got from this little application area right here. And normally on sing single stage paint, you would get color transfer, but this is actually not the same color. So this is actually lead. So when you're polishing on this kind of a car from 1950s and 60s, and you get this result, the thing you wanna really hone in on is frequent and thorough pad cleaning. Because if you don't remove this material, you'll be rubbing it back into the paint and possibly hurting your finish. With that, we each started different sections of the car with the wool pad that cuts and finishes really well, especially on larger flat areas that don't need as much conforming to unique shapes and curves on most cars. This one here is obviously flat and straight, so it's great for these types of pads, but I did wanna know a little bit more about what's going on with these tiny little bits of rust I'm seeing everywhere. Okay, at this point I did a 50-50 on the door and the difference is obviously night and day. There's a bunch of orange over here and then I'm also seeing underneath this orange that just got removed, all these little dimples here. So I'm, Kevin, what's really going on here? Yeah, what you're seeing is rust. Now it's either caused by one of two things. Either in the environment this vehicle sat in, there was particulate and landed on the paint and over time it rusted. But because we see this texture, that micro dots, mm -hmm or solvent popping or whatever that is, it very likely means that the vehicle itself rusted upward. So the pinhole that goes through the paint and primer down to the metal is where the rust comes from, but it's very thin. Obviously, you had to polish it off and restore the finish. So for the next few hours, we polished and blew out the pads more frequently. By the way, having a lift for a car that has a ton of real estate like this one is critical to saving your back and if you plan on being in this business for a long time. 
the up and down on your knees is damaging over many years of doing it. So keep that in mind if you're gonna jump into the industry. These guys take forever to do everything. After the paint polishing session, it just looks so much better. The paint really pops. So we took a little break and focused on the engine and the mouse house. Vacuum time. Once everything was vacuumed up, we used the Pro Foamer and Frothy and just let the cleaner sit there and do its work. You can actually see the mouse poop turning the white cleaner brown, which was really gross, but it is doing its job to lift the grime. On the jams, Kevin and Jason used Titan 12 degreaser to help loosen up the stuck on junk before we gave it a quick rinse, dried with compressed air and towel wipe down, and it looked and actually smelled way better. Phase two of this process is the interior, which isn't really that bad. It definitely has some mouse droppings and some mold and a bit of moisture getting in, that kind of thing. Otherwise, the material itself is in great condition, so we had high hopes for this. On a completely random note, if you are looking to confirm the presence of rodents in your car, a good place to start is the glove box. For whatever reason, that seems to be the hot spot over the years. Now, if you see poop, seeds, and of course, a little bit more subtle is the chewed up paper that will be in there. You gotta look closely for that. You definitely have a mouse. If you have one mouse, it's very likely you have lots of mice in the car, so also keep that in mind. So, step one is to remove everything you can and just vacuum everything up. Kevin likes to use a brush in the tight spots to remove the dust and the dirt around so that the vacuum can suck it and pick it up immediately. It's a really cool technique that I haven't seen in a long time. It helps kind of sweep the stubborn material into the suction stream. It's pretty cool. Likewise, if you have compressed air, that can be helpful as well. Next, I removed the mold with lather interior cleaner and an interior brush. Now, luckily it wasn't terrible mold, so a basic cleaning removed it easily. We repeated the same steps on the rest of the interior, including the door handles and the absolutely gorgeous buttons and window switches. If you look closely inside the door handle, you can see it's clearly a highway for mouse travel over all these years. There's little brown spots and stains. Once everything was cleaned, Kevin polished the door handles by hand with polish. When he was done, they looked absolutely amazing. While Kevin was working on all the metal polishing, Jason followed up the lather scrubbing with the steam machine to ensure we really got deep into the fibers. While Jason was using the steamer, I steam vacked the rugs to pick up the extra moisture and anything that was left behind inside the carpets. To do this, I usually start by spraying shag fabric cleaner first, then scrubbing it in with a dual density carpet brush. Then I come in and steam vac it for those of you keeping track of the process.
Once we were all done, I protected the freshly exfoliated vinyl with mousse conditioner and UV protection because this feels a bit crusty after all these years, and especially after we just cleaned it with heat. At this point, the pores are ready for some moisture, much like when you get out of the shower, your skin feels that certain way, that same kind of concept, you put cream on your skin, we're doing that to the interior as well. All right, so we just cleaned the inside of this car and it looks absolutely amazing. You can see there's just beautiful chrome pieces everywhere. Obviously, they don't make cars like they used to, but one of the coolest parts of sitting in the back seat is one, I'm a pretty big guy and I'm relatively comfortable here, but you can see there's actually a door handle for the back, for the passenger to get out of the back. How, look at this. That's pretty cool. Now, during the initial wash a few hours ago, Kevin first attempted to clean the white walls on the tires with a dish scrub pad, you know, the green side of it, and he had no luck. So he wanted to try again towards the end here with a power tool and a stiff bristle scrubber and a ton of plum wheel cleaner. At this point, we're rounding third on the, on the project, but we need to focus on the tires. Specifically, these are white wall and they're a little more difficult to clean because these have been aged quite a bit and they've oxidized very deeply. Typically, you can spray a cleaner on there, scrub it away, but these are stubborn. So what we're doing, we're using the wheel cleaner, Plum, and it works incredibly well on these old dead tires. Now, once again, we've already scrubbed these, but it just didn't do that big a transformation. So we're switching to a little more power and we're gonna use a, a stiff bristle brush. They're not just yellow on top, they're kind of, it's kind of embedded dead. Uh, rubber so we have to scrub that away so first do it with the brush I'm gonna switch to a typical scrubby pad this one's a white which is a mild if this doesn't work I could go to a green or a red or a brown but we give this a shot and it's working pretty good and I get a lot more pressure with the scrub pad and my hand versus the brush and that's why I'm doing both I want to get the brush to get in all the little nuances there up in there which I'll do all that and then put some heavy pressure on the white wall to make them look restored and fresh and then we'll go ahead and protect this with mud tire dressing when we're done. After all this tire and wheel fun we were having with Kevin, I totally forgot to open the trunk and when we did, we found this. Oh, that is next level. Look at all that crap. Well, we know where they're living. So apparently the trunk is where they lived and the interior and the engine is just sort of where they summered. That is... This was next level gross. Clearly they had lived here, peed and poop. It was everywhere. If you look at the bottom as we took everything out, the bottom of the trunk was just absolutely soaked in urine. Step one in this situation is just to kind of scoop everything up and clean all of the fecal matter. When we're done with that and it looks relatively clean, then you go in with restore and kill the bacteria and the germs living and growing there just to sort of make it safe for them to drive in the upcoming wedding. As we were sort of rounding third on this project, I was working on the trunk disaster. Kevin was off playing with the door jams and his favorite plum wheel cleaner and Jason was degreasing the floor mats. Oh, that is gross. Look at all that stuff. Afterwards, I added mousse to protect the roof and more focused on the UV protection aspect of that. Jason was cleaning the glass and Kevin, who was still working on the wheels, added mud to the rubber, but he also used an old brush of mine to push the mud dressing into the tight spots on the tire as well, which was a really cool trick and it looked really great, but he is completely insane. And every time I work with him, it's something new and exciting. This is awesome. So what we're going to do is kind of unorthodox. Well, it's very unorthodox. Having said all of that, the wheels truthfully did look a thousand percent better than they did before. And the work that was involved in that was so much more than I put on film. Kudos to Kevin. As the final touch, we added Reflex Pro finishing wax and check out the applicator pad just after a few passes. It turned black from the freshly exfoliated pores of the paint and it was super cool to see because I don't get to work on lead sleds often, so it was a real privilege. And by the end, it looked absolutely perfect, brand new. So I called Pat up to the shop to show his dad his freshly detailed Tornado. Here we go. Hey. Hey, what's going Good to see on? You guys. Come on in. Watch your step. There she is. Holy <laughs> hey. Come on in. Come on in. What's going on, guys? Wow.
Wow. <laughs> looks like brand new. Brand new, right? Wow. Yeah, we did find some, uh, <laughs> some uh, <laughs> rodents oh. here, just a few. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, you'll, you'll find out in the video, you'll see. The trunk was the absolutely trunk was... full of them. Yeah. Like, I mean, the biggest, like, this nest was like this big. There was like mold all over the Yeah, we got all the mold off it, all inside the seats. And then we, then we did all the chrome areas, you see in there? They're just foggy right now because it's misty. Yeah. But, um, it, we really took all these pieces back. Wow. Door handles. This wow. is all done by hand inside. That was Kevin Swartek. Right, thank sure. you so much. No worries. Wow, the chrome, incredible. the chrome is like, I thought I would have to get it re chrome It's like, brought it back to life. Is this a uh, wedding dress approved? I think so. I think I could hop <laughs> in in my dress. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right, guys, we're all done, and the lead sled looks absolutely amazing. What I mean by lead sled, of course, is when we were polishing, all the lead came off onto the pad. It looked pretty crazy, but that's actually normal, according to the bosses back there. Say hi, guys. There they are. Uh, and it was really a huge privilege to be able to do that with the two of them. Plus, my buddy Pat is getting married and using this car in his wedding, so that's kind of a big deal to be uh, a part of that huge privilege, of course. But uh, as always, for myself, Kevin, Jason, uh, we had a blast. And uh, Pat, hope you enjoy it. Thanks again, bud. Bye. Well, guys, we're all done and the tornado looks absolutely amazing. More importantly, there is a towel in the windshield. <laughs> you see the towel in the windshield? You see a towel in the windshield? You know why there's a towel in the windshield? Because of that man right there. That man right there, I'm gonna squeeze his head. And you fight. <laughs>